Sarah, you watched that speech. You're probably the only one, even though we're the only ones uh, who have had some alcohol tonight, you're, <laughs> we're the only ones who also, at this point, are relatively coherent. What did you think of that? <laughs> Sorry, you. guys. Yeah, you're uh, fine. <laughs> what did you think of the speech? Well, I mean, it's easy to sound nice and polished when you're just lying. Well, it wasn't right. easy for Joe Biden, though. Right? Okay, sorry. It's easy when you don't have dementia and okay. you're half, uh, you know, you're not half dead to stand up and deliver a speech full of just total and complete lies. So, yeah, it sounded good. It was delivered well. Clearly, you had someone that told her, for the love of God, don't go off script. And she doesn't have dementia, so she knew not to go off script because, you know, obviously Joe, when uh, when they tell him that, he forgets and he goes off script. And so, I mean. I still think that Donald Trump, um, if he goes on to this debate, he watches her performance and he goes on to this debate and he says, I just have to make sure that I remind America as often as possible, all of the policies, all of the pain that you're feeling today, right now in this country are because of her. She is part mm, of the administration. So because key. Yes, because she is trying to dis, like she wants to disassociate from the policies, but at the same time, she wants to talk about how great it is, but then at the same time, she wants to talk about how things are so bad here. Don't let her own both of those things. Paint her as the person who is in charge, which obviously she is. And I think that that's the key to, you know, um, trying to trying to back her into a corner because, again, I mean, you saw, you saw it with Gavin Newsom. You see it with so many Democrat lawmakers. They, if they just stand up there and lie, it sounds great. Yeah. In a way, it's almost like watching the consultant class run a candidate. Yeah. Right? Like it is like for the first time, you don't have someone who really feels passionately about getting their own views out there. She's going to listen to these consultants. She's going to go out there and do what she's kind of told. Right. And I don't know. Can that can that work in America, Alex? Well, you talk about the low information voters. Glenn was talking about that. And then, you know, it just makes me go right back to 2020. And we had Hunter Biden's laptop that had unlimited nude pictures of the, you know, president's or future president's son. We had his business dealings with Ukraine. We, you know, we have information of a diary doing disgusting things. And we had the CIA and FBI come out and say that that was just Russian disinformation. So if that won't wake up somebody, I don't think anything in this campaign is going to wake up the low information voters. So I think Glenn's right. God, you guys are so bad. I hate to be like that. I just hate to, I would have thought that laptop would have sunk Biden. I just thought it would. Mm. It didn't. I almost think that these people are almost too big to fail now that they're in power. But the laptop isn't something that people are feeling right now, right? Like the right. laptop. I'm saying they were able the to overcome that, and yes, I don't think there's going to be a thorn in their side bigger than that. But I'm saying like nobody had nobody had some personal experience that they were negatively affected by the laptop. I mean, unless you got smelled by Joe right, Biden. People did, but like, but but American voters didn't have that experience. Um, now sure they have cousin. now <laughs> they have the experience, right? Like they're living in a Harris administration as much as she wants to again disassociate herself from the administration. They are living in that. It's not yeah. just some obscure like, oh, Joe Biden's kid is like a really bad crack addict. This is their life under Kamala Harris, and so I do think that that adds uh, a factor that we haven't seen before. And to be fair, I think Hunter Biden was a really good crack addict. I think he was really good at it. Um, he was good at yeah, it. Yeah, okay. I just He's want to make sure. Person, he always waited out and took that. a picture of the yes. scale so he made sure he wasn't getting ripped off. He yeah, really good I would say he was that. an excellent crack, yeah. crack addict. Listen, and that's so everyone has to be good at something. Yes, I would agree. <laughs> I will say, too, I think watching this uh, all happen, we have to remember the 2019 2020 uh, Kamala run. And we've talked about this before, yes. Sarah. Anytime. There was this boomlet, right? She started, she rose up, she had this moment, and then it all collapsed. And, I, you know, I, I can't help. But think, even watching that, and I think this is a great moment for her. She's really, really excited about it. Like, the Democrats are pumped up. But that tends to deflate. You can't build, usually, you can't build a presidential campaign on nothing. It's not Seinfeld. This is not what we're doing here. And I think, like, the only question is, because there's only about 10 weeks left in this campaign, can they push this thing to the end and somehow get a victory out of this? But I wouldn't be surprised if we come back and look at tonight as sort of the peak of this Kamala thing. We will see. Um, we also will see the uh, meme contest vote 
uh, winners that we have coming up here. Now, we did this pitch a while ago that people okay. were supposed to create memes. I like it. I don't. I can't really remember that long ago in, in this particular broadcast, but that <laughs> did happen, apparently. And we have uh, some finalists. Is that right? Um, Sarah, can you walk us through? Because it's not like I my eyesight is preventing me from reading these. Sarah, can you read them? Boy, me either. I can read it just fine. Don't mind me looking off screen. Okay. Uh, all right, so this is obviously D.L. Hughley. Who, and it says, me 12 beers deep at IHOP at 3 a.m. trying to show the waitresses how big I want my pancakes. <laughs> That's a solid one. I like it. Funny. That is solid. I like it. I had to make this point, Stu, and this yes. is going to make you mad. Oh, the no. symbol that he's doing is a Q symbol. Oh, here we go. oh no. And that is a black fraternity, a fraternal organization. Uh, that's just Q weird. is? That, he, that's what the black guys do, the Q dog. That means you're in a fraternity. The Q dog. This See, again, fraternity. this is why it's you, a real fraternity. I'm bringing saying, real information. I talked about a black boule. I talked about a uh, you know secret society of evil black people. Uh, he's in it and he's leading it, and that's. I'm glad I'm evil. still sitting here. Yes, I appreciate <laughs> it. Not all okay. black people are evil, but the ones that are like friends of D.L. Hughley are. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. That's an important <laughs> clarification. Okay, our next. All right, so the next one, <laughs> the next one uh, is, is Joe and Jill. And Joe says, honey, look, that's my convention. And she says, was your convention, Joe? Uh, was. Uh, that's just sad. That, that made me sad. Elder abuse. If, if he, if he know. wasn't, you know, it's true. If he wasn't a horrible, horrible human being that's destroying the country, I would legitimately feel bad for Biden. Do you not feel bad this. when he fell off that bike? I actually, I no, actually that was the she, funniest thing I I've ever bad. seen. I felt bad. It happened life. so slowly, I didn't feel bad for him. It oh, was really that funny. Was Funny. Yeah. I see. I felt. I was like, "That's our president. He's falling down." You know, all these people are looking at. It. I. Did, that made me feel sad. I felt. Yeah. Putting him on a bike though is just a stunt. That's what's sad about it. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. It's like a circus where you're just, Yeah. You're just like, it's. Let's just make the pan to ride the bike. It's just a sad. <laughs> just back. Sad thing. Yeah. All right. We've got another Meme one. Meme number three. Yes. It's uh, Joe Biden at the convention. My butt's been wiped. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say it was highbrow. <laughs> but it, but I would say it might have either. been what he was thinking at that moment. I think it might be accurate. It looks like he's about to take a question from Ben Franklin. <laughs> 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 All right, and number four on the meme uh, parade here. Uh, Kamala, when the pot finally kicks in and Dougie got Doritos. <laughs> that is good. Yeah, That's I can solid. see that. That's yeah, funny. That does up. seem like their actual relationship. Like, it seems like that could be a real moment in the relationship. Okay. So, uh, do we have a winner here? Or are we supposed to decide this? What's the, oh, how does this work? Dougie. What, do yeah, we have anything from the really control good. room? How are we supposed to do this? Uh, I think I, I think they're Dougie. all winners. Yeah. Here okay, at Blaze, we, we like to get participation trophies. No, I don't think so. I think we got to pick one. Yeah, her dad's um, Jamaican, so the weed connection, yeah. I like I'm going to go Dougie. I, th I like that one, too. The Dougie one? Yeah, I like that one, too. I mean, that the... one's funny because it's sad. But I also like the Dougie one. Give us the Dougie one. Do we I have? like the Doritos one. Doritos Dougie. Ben there it is. Doritos. When the pot finally kicks in and Dougie got Doritos. Uh, that's our winner. Congratulations yeah. to whoever the hell that was. Uh, it's Chris G721. Right, that's what I, I was about to say. It's Chris, Chris G721. Yeah. Which, by the way, is a main source for Alex Stein. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of my uh, you know, sources. <laughs> um, uh, Dave, <laughs> before we leave, yes. can you give me your reaction to this fiasco? I loved it. <laughs> really? No, I think uh, if I, I, I guess I, I don't know if I'm supposed to be serious or not. I, I would, I would not. Yeah, might as well start, start now. This is a good time. <laughs> yeah, it's a good start. End the night on a yeah, somber just note. Sit down. Should I put a very dark, I sad ending? Into ending. a sweater. If yeah. you cry, it's even better. Oh, really? Yeah. I could cry. I would just let all my real feelings out. <laughs> um, I think uh, honestly, I don't understand uh, how she could possibly. I think the best way to see if she could really be the president is if you sat down and had an honest conversation with her where she would have to answer a question just like that, simply. The same way that you have Donald Trump going on podcasts right now, I'd like to just, her yeah. unscripted, have to talk. I think we would find out a lot about her, mm -hmm. and I think she would lose immediately. Mm -hmm. Because everything that I saw tonight was completely, like, Thanks. you're standing in an arena of people that people have bought million dollar suites to clap for you so they can keep the money in their pockets mm -hmm. and out of the hands of everybody in this country that actually needs it. So I think that, I mean, really, I'd like, if, I'd like her to have to sit down and do an impromptu interview 
where she actually has to interview for the job of President of the United States and see what her policies and plans actually are, because I don't believe she has any. She's is that, not going to do that by choice, though, is right? Is that a no. realistic possibility? Dave? It's not, yeah. well, because it, politics don't exist like that, but it's because we're full of lobbyists and bullshit, yeah. and this is what we're going to end up with, and if she gets elected, it's just going to be more and more of that.